The Fellowship of Christian Councils and Churches in the Great Lakes Region and Horn of Africa, Theklaha, is relevant today as it was 10 years ago in 1999. What is Feklaha? What triggered its formation? And what is its mandate? Feklaha came out of um, the history, particularly uh, after the genocide in Rwanda in uh, 1994 where um, churches and church councils were caught unawares um, about what was happening. Many of them, the Tanzanian churches, the Kenyan churches, the Zairean churches at that time, found themselves um, you know, t bringing in, taking in um, refugees and not really understanding what was the root cause, why were these refugees um, you know, coming into their countries. Here was South Africa coming of its own, and here was Rwanda uh, coming apart. And this really was the story of Africa. So there were very mixed emotions. And, uh, and so the question was, what do we do? South Africa is now free. What is the responsibility of the ecumenical family now to the region? Since its inception in 1999, Feklaha has remained consistent to its mission to enhance peace reconciliation in the Great Lakes region and Horn of Africa by facilitating ecumenical cooperation and fellowship. The Klaha members are drawn from nine countries, namely Burundi, Democratic Republic of Congo DRC, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. Going by this country's total population of 270 million out of Africa's estimated 840 million, Feklaha is thus responsible for a third of Africa's population. From its preceding strategic plan of 2006 to 2008, Feklaha has learned key lessons to the successful fulfillment of its mandate. One was the need to have um, ecumenical conflict and early warning mechanisms. We felt that we have the structures, we have the infrastructure, but we're not using it enough. Secondly, we have come to realize there's a need for an ongoing civic education, not to wait until the times of elections to respond, but to have that going on all the time. Thirdly, we also learned that um, as Feklaha, it is imperative for us to engage with the policy makers in the region. We have to influence the policies, and for that to happen, we need to engage with the governments and intergovernmental organizations in the region where we work. We also learned as Feklaha that it's important and in fact is imperative that we engage and we involve the women and the youth in peace building exercises and conflict transformation within this region. And lastly, for the need, there's a need for ownership of our members. And for us to achieve that, we need to build our strategies and our activities based and guided by their own needs, uh, sentiments, and also strategic plan. Feklaha's strategic plan is informed by a scan of both external and internal environments that it operates in. Feklaha operates in a very volatile and unstable region where there have been conflicts and most countries are in post-conflict phase. A number of countries are also in reconstruction phase and we have some countries that were in conflict, came out of conflict and are relapsing back to conflict. But what are some of the strengths, opportunities and threats that Feklaha contends with? One of the strengths of, uh, of uh, Feklaha is the fact that we have uh, historical presence but we also have a tested infrastructure 
that reaches the grassroots and in some cases very remote areas but as also has the capacity to influence the governance institutions of any country or any region and therefore that infrastructure provides us with a lot with a strength and opportunity to influence the policies but also to build the capacity of our members at the grassroots level and uh, be able to advocate for their needs. The second one is the mandate that we do have. Feklaha is a faith-based organization and that gives us an opportunity because the mandate we believe is a divine mandate, reconciliation and healing is a mandate that comes from God and is part of our Christian mission and vision. And from there we can uh, bring, come out with the tools to respond to conflict, transformation and peace building in the region. I would say that well, another strength that we do have as Feklaha is uh, a lean secretariat but very effective that facilitates the works of our member councils. Uh, an insecure political environment uh, because of some of the countries are in conflict situations such as Somalia and others still in latent conflict situations such as Kenya and still others are undergoing post-conflict situations such as Burundi which make the situation to remain insecure. Communications problems across the Feklaha region due to poor communication and infrastructure and physical infrastructure uh, matters take longer to be deliberated on, planned or even to be responded to and of course this will delay the natural flow of our work. Um, continued violence and conflict which might undermine the gains so far made in promoting peace and reconciliation. And one of the major challenges in this aspect is the implementation of the provisions of peace accords and international declarations and decisions. One, um, and related to this is the plight of future generations, that is children who are living in situations of conflict and forced to witness some of the worst atrocities, evils and inhuman acts. And the possibility of a continued politicization of ethnicity leading to further conflicts, loss of life and displacement of persons. The situation is even made worse by people living within the internally displaced persons camps, that is IDP camps, within their very own countries in really inhuman conditions. I still think that we, we interpret our experiences and challenges still with the lenses of politicians. I think we should begin to interpret our reality through and, 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 and based on the, on the lenses of our faith. And we also have um, increased competition for the resources that might be available for our work. What we, what we have as common challenge in, uh, in Africa is that whatever we try to do, we are doing it from resources generated from outside. So sometimes we don't do what we want to do because we don't have resources. And uh, of course, time, when time will come and we get resources from our constituency, this will be much better. The Institutional Philosophy of Feklaha is founded on clarity of purpose in its identity, a focused vision and determined mission. Feklaha's new strategic plan sets out its agenda for the period 2009 to 2013. It is a consolidation of lessons learned experiences and new practices accumulated over its journey of time. Well, during the time stipulated uh, in our current strategic plan, FECLAHA intends to respond to the issues within the framework of four main themes. One will be peace building. Two will focus on governance and public accountability. Three, we'll focus on human security. And lastly, we will focus on institutional strengthening and uh, capacity enhancement. When we focus in these four areas, we'll have gender as a cross-cutting 
mainstreamed area of focus. We'll also have uh, HIV AIDS as a cross-cutting issue, but we will focus on HIV within the armed conflict situation. When you talk about peace as a theme or peace building as a theme, we intend to pursue social justice and also focus on a, a sustainable peace, to get sustainable peace in the region. In its quest to support peace building and conflict transformation in the Great Lakes region and Horn of Africa, Feklaha not only works with its membership, but also other ecumenical partners and like-minded organizations to find lasting solutions to conflicts that have plagued the region for decades. Feklaha seeks to work with uh, the church, with men of the cloth, on matters to do with conflict transformation and peace building. And uh, several years ago, uh, Feklaha got in touch with the money and sought to have the money mobilize members of parliament to engage with um, high ranking members of the clergy on the subject of peace building and um, specifically citizenship and belonging in the Great Lakes region. It was a very exciting uh, initiative, one that remains exciting to date. It has currently evolved into um, an interface through the Great Lakes Ecumenical Forum. The forum brings together um, leadership of the ecumenical bodies in this part of uh, the Great Lakes region as well as the Horn of Africa and members of parliament uh, as a platform where they can converge and uh, debate and influence policy uh, on matters of peace and security. FECLA is one of those organizations, uh, platforms that we are working with very closely in the Horn of Africa to respond to the various challenges most a chronic one conflict in the Horn of Africa. The Tama campaign is quite a unique uh, initiative by Feklaha and it has received a lot of interest from the other faith communities because I think it's, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's among the first to be able to get religious leaders to talk about sexual or gender-based violence and uh, when we had our workshop for example in Nairobi in 2008 for the women the women were challenged to go to their own texts that is uh, the Hindu the Muslim and other faith communities to go back to their faiths and be able to identify uh, sections which could also support similar similar um, starting points for discussion on this uh, gender-based violence. For efficacy, FECLAHA, with its partners and associates, undertakes programs and campaigns. But it's not all gloom and doom for Africa. We must keep hope alive and support Feklaha in the execution of its mandate. We still remain true to our vision, the vision of pursuing communities that are all inclusive, harmonious, and living abundant life in the Great Lakes and the Horn of Africa. That is our vision. That is what we are going to pursue in the next uh, five years and beyond. We know that the challenges are still there, but we are inspired by the words of uh, one poet, George Bernard Shaw, who said that you look at the things the way they are and you ask why. But I dream of things that never were and I ask, why not? We are also encouraged by the words of Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 when Paul said 
that I'm sure that the He, that is Christ, who began this good work in you, will bring it to completion until that day of Christ Jesus. As for Clara, we believe that God who started this good work in us will bring it to completion.